Good day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Right, Friday morning here in Australia, so obviously sort of Thursday night stateside time and we can see the market has taken a bit of a dip as well. So again, is this the start of, you know, further downside for the weekend or is this it and maybe we, you know, pump up for the rest of the weekend or just go sideways? You know, that is the question again. Uh, I think we're just going to do a lot of uh, choppy action uh, going sideways for quite some time and I've said that before uh, and I haven't seen anything that makes me think anything different just yet. But again, let's have a look what's happening at the market at the moment. All right, so BTC dominance has risen, so 42%. ETH dominance dropped a little bit, 17.7% uh, and GUI prices almost into single digits. It'll have been a long time since we've seen single digit GUI prices uh, so yeah, there's you know upsides to a market that's not really doing too much, but you know everyone's really looking for <laughs> the gains. But you know, not financial advice, just my personal opinion. When the market is boring and nothing's going on, it's just traveling sideways. That is really accumulation time. Now again, I can't say that the market won't go lower. It absolutely could, and there's people saying that they believe it can, but you know. If it goes lower, I just continue to buy. That's what I do. Because what I know is if I'm buying Bitcoin right now at 36,000, I know it's been as high as 64,000. So that means I'm buying it at half price already. Again, could it go lower? Absolutely, it could go lower. But that means I'm just buying it at a cheaper price again. And when it finally does start to go up, then my gains will be ex, you know, exponential. But again, that's not financial advice. That's just my personal opinion and what I've learned you know, from investing over a number of years now, but particularly in the cryptocurrency market. Again, so this could go down to $20,000 Bitcoin. That's what people are saying. A lot of people are saying it has to come back down and retest its old all-time high. So look, that's really going to hurt and altcoins are getting you know, absolutely monstered at the moment. But again, that's just the way it goes. Even the altcoins are on massive discounts at the moment. And again, unfortunately, the price is if Bitcoin really does go back and test, you know, retest twenty thousand dollars, you know, these altcoins are going to get absolutely obliterated. And some people, including myself, are going to be massively in the red uh, on these coins that, you know, we've bought in the last sort of, you know, probably couple of months. But that's just the way it goes. Again, for me, I, I, I believe I've invested generally. You know, it's hard to know because you know. Uh, time is the greatest storyteller, but I believe that I've invested generally in pretty good project projects, and that they will bounce back. Will it possibly take me four years to you know recoup that money? Absolutely, it might. But if that's the case, then so be it. And again, look, I, I don't want to you know make it sound like it's all doom and gloom. I don't think we're in a bear market yet, but it is in the back of my mind that we might be. And if that's the case, then you know so be it. I'm just going to continue to dollar cost average in average into the big ones like Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, and just let those kind of altcoins ride because I haven't put that much into my altcoins anyway. In the grand scam of things, I mean grand scheme of things, <laughs> grand scam, <laughs> grand scheme of things, sorry I apologize, Bitcoin and Ethereum are my biggest sort of holdings and they make up over 60% of my to total portfolio. And look, even some of the altcoins, I mean, I still think they're pretty good ones uh, and uh, have long-term potential, but, you know, time will tell. All right, let's move on anyway. 24 hours, it doesn't look pretty at the moment. There's a lot of red going there, and again, even over the last seven days. But it is a lot of chop-soaring action for a number of coins. You know, Ethereum just keeps ranging anywhere between sort of 2100 and maybe sort of, you know, 2700-ish sort of thereabouts. But again, you know, seven days it is down, but not as low as what it was uh, a little while ago. So, all right, has anything performed well in the last 24 hours? Because it just it doesn't look pretty at the moment, and the overall market is down 2.5%. All right, any outliers? All right, Amp, Chili's, there we go, nice. Had a little bit of a pullback. Uh, sorry, a bit of a pump, but look, it's still down over the last seven days. Same thing with Wazir X, Bitcoin Gold for some reason got a, a pump out of nowhere. Terra Luna, but again, still down 12.5%. And look, that's a coin that I got into, uh, and I am down quite heavily in it. I still like Terra Luna, uh, and I will continue 
uh, to buy some at some stage, but I need to see the market turn around before I really start to focus on the altcoins at the moment. You know, I might throw a couple of dollars at one or two here and there, but mainly it's just Bitcoin and Ethereum that I'll focus on if we are legitimately in a bear market. I will continue to dollar cost average in because I know that's the best uh, way. I can't tell exactly when the market's at a top and I can't tell exactly when it's at a bottom. So I just find projects I like, build a position in them and I'll wait for them to be in profit and then I'll start to take some money. And look, I did take profits. Uh, Again, at Bitcoin when it was around 47,000 and I've been able to rebuy back in at cheaper prices. Now I just have to wait and see whether that was the right time to do it. At the moment, uh, with the altcoins that I bought into, no, the altcoins I bought into in the last sort of probably two or three weeks, uh, I think it was probably about two weeks ago now, have been absolutely murdered, <laughs> unfortunately. But uh, Bitcoin uh, has, I bought some at about 30, I think I got some just over 31,000, so I did a right there. 34,000 did a right there, and I did buy a little bit at 39,000, so I'm under there. Uh, Ethereum, I bought some at uh, 2,100, so it hasn't really gotten back to that price, so I'm up there. But again, all the other alts and that that I put some money into, absolutely smashed. So again, it is what it is, but yeah. Nearly a 20% gain, 14%, and then we're just into the single digits for a few and we get into the stable coins. So that means, you know, unfortunately, some coins are really going to have gotten wrecked at the moment. So let's have a look. What hasn't done well? All right, there we go. Internet computer just continues to go down. I mean, this was literally trading at a couple of hundred dollars. I think, what was it, about $400 or something? And so now it's down to $67. So again, ouch, that really hurts. Theta Fuel, Thor Chain, Pirate Chain, Nano Compound, uh, Chainlink, yeah, coins all over the place, uh, getting absolutely smashed. I mean, Synthetics Network. I literally bought the most I paid was twenty four dollars for Synthetics Network, uh, and now it is down to nine dollars. So, yeah, ouch. That really does hurt a little bit. But look, again, I bought a lot more for less than a dollar. So you know. You win some, you lose some. I still really like Synthetics Network. I will continue to buy more Synthetics Network. It's just going to, it's not gonna be something I'm gonna be buying right now, but once we see a bottoming out sort of formation and things start to settle, this is something I will be buying more of. Synthetics, uh, Arve, really like both of those. Uh, may have to look at trying to get myself a position uh, in Theta. Look, they're still up, they're doing really well. They've got their main net launch. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see. Same, heard good things about Thorchain. So there's plenty of projects that I'd like to get a position in, but I'm just not rushing into anything at the moment. I mean, Polygon, you know, again, this was $2 something and now it's $1.38. So even it's getting absolutely sort of wrecked at the moment. But, you know, I still believe in Polygon. Got some Polygon news. It's a really good project. Just again, the market got super overheated and now... It's just going to reset itself. And particularly in the altcoins is where people are going to get hammered and wrecked the most. But look, only a couple of really big losses. So internet computer, again, that hurts. Uh, and then a couple of double digit ones, and then we're into single digits. But it's the seven day chart that's really affecting people, you know, outside of Theta Fuel. Uh, you know, congratulations to them. Everything else, I mean, look at that 20%, 20%, 20%, you know, 15%, 20%. So definitely. Yeah, there's some coins that are getting absolutely smashed at the moment. All right, let's move on to the charts. So here we go, get rid of that. So again, Bitcoin, it's still just ranging. Nothing too much is happening. It is still within this uh, channel. Again, so this upwards channel, it dipped out for a moment and jumped back in. So yeah, we're gonna have to wait and see. And as I've said a number of times, I wouldn't be surprised if we just get sideways movement for quite some time. Like it literally could last another few weeks, another month or two. And if that's the case, unfortunately, altcoins will get wrecked. Uh, but, you know, that's what it is. Once this market turns around, and at some stage it will, whether it's, you know, three years from now, four years from now, or whenever, you know, those good projects, the, the, you know, the ones that, you know, have the distance, good teams, pine them, fundamentals and all that, they will get back to their old all-time highs. And that's that's the only thing I think about in the altcoins that I got into lately. I bought them at, you know, 
almost a third of their all-time highs. Now, they have gone down even further, but that means I've got, basically, I can sort of triple my money when they get to their next old all-time high. Now, unfortunately, I can still lose a lot more money in the meantime, but I'm confident that, you know, most of those, and, you know, it'd be nice if all of those would at some stage get back to their old all-time highs, and I will have tripled my money when they do that. So, you know, it, it is what it is. No one can time the market exactly perfect. You gotta take some risks, and they're the risks I've taken. So Bitcoin hasn't really changed, still holding above that kind of 27,000, but again, there is people saying that Bitcoin needs to get back down to here. It is, it's gonna to have to come back and retest this. So if it does that, I mean, ouch, altcoins are going to get murdered. And I'm look, I'm even buying Bitcoin at the moment. And if Bitcoin gets down to 20,000, then that is really gonna hurt. But again, it's that short-term mentality where it's really gonna hurt. I'm not here for the quick flip. Like, yes, I'd love to turn, you know, a couple of hundred dollars into a couple of million overnight. That'd be fantastic and great. I don't realistically think that that's going to happen. So for me, I'm here for the next five, 10, 20 years to see what kind of happens. And so if I, you know, lose money uh, during periods, so be it. Facts are at the moment, no one's ever lost money. Generally in cryptocurrencies, if they're in good projects that have been around, if they've stayed in it for four years. If they've stayed in for four years, they've usually had exponential uh, growth uh, in those coins. Now, not all coins, there's lots of shit ones that don't last that long, but any coin that has kind of stood the test of time, if you've been in it for four years, and particularly if you've just continued to dollar cost average in, in four years time, even if you bought at the absolute peak, you've made some pretty crazy kind of gains. So that's all I think about is I will continue to dollar cost average into things. And again, once Bitcoin starts to show some you know, movement and starts to go up, and again, not a fake out, we really need to get kind of above this $43,000 level. If we get above there, then I'll start to put more money into the altcoins. But until then, really, it's just Bitcoin and Ethereum. And I was thinking Polygon, uh, but not so much. Uh, and, you know, maybe a little bit of Cardano, but really Bitcoin and Ethereum. They're kind of the big plays that I'll focus on. All right, moving on, let's get on to the stories. So the IMF plans to meet with El Salvador's president, potentially discussing move to adopt Bitcoin. Now, not the IMF's move to adopt Bitcoin, their move. Uh, is what it's about. So the International Monetary Fund has previously spoken out against smaller nations like the Marshall Islands recognizing a digital currency as legal tender. So even the IMF are against digital sort of currencies at the moment, you know, there, there's a whole lot of work that needs to be done uh, around all that sort of stuff. And the Marshall Islands was the uh, country I was trying to think of. I thought it was one of those small Pacific nations and that's what the Marshall Islands is, but I, th I thought it was something like Kiribati or whatever. And I'm pretty sure they were getting Algorand to build that for them as well. But the IMF are still kind of against it. There's, you know, regulation and things that need to be done uh, before they're really kind of ready to jump on board and really they'll want you know some big country like America or Europe to do it first before other smaller nations do it but they can't really control that right so it says here the International Monetary Fund has said El Salvador's recent decision to make Bitcoin legal tender in the country may raise legal and financial concerns now the IMF team would be meeting with President uh, Bukele today and implied crypto would be a likely topic for discussion now, the IMF, IMF have often voiced concerns about countries adopting digital currencies. So I'm sure they'll be trying to uh, put a little bit of pressure on El Salvador to maybe you know slow that progress down because I don't think they'll get them to be able to change it. And it even did go in here uh, to say that they were going to offer them more money and things like that. Uh, but you know I don't think more of the problem is what they need and the monetary system that we currently have is a problem. It works for select few, uh, you know, the ones really high up, and everyone else it doesn't work so well for. So I think it says here, uh, having approved emergency funds related to the pandemic last year. So they are trying to give them, you know, money, and I am sure they're gonna place pressure on them to, you know, possibly even change their stance on Bitcoin, but I don't like the chances of that, 
especially considering what's happening in the world, they're just going to try and slow it down for them to for the IMF to try and get on top of things before they yeah don't have any control of it. But you know, watch this space. We'll have to wait and see what happens. All right, Polygon. So. Again, I, I still really like Polygon and I will buy more. Just at the moment, I, yeah, I'm not sure that with the prices continuing to dip. The most stable coin at the moment really is Ethereum and Bitcoin. They're just in a ranging motion. Every other coin basically just continues to go down. So until there's some kind of movement, movement either way, whether it's to the upside or the downside, I don't think I'm going to focus on uh, altcoins uh, too much. I'm not saying I won't put any money into them, but I just probably won't be putting a lot because I, you know, I don't know exactly when the bottom's coming yet. So yeah, we'll have to wait and see. All right. So Polygon are committing 10 million to reach 1 million users using using the U the zero X sorry uh, API. The project said it anticipated an influx of new DeFi projects onboarding into the zero X ecosystem. So again, DeFi is probably where I'm really going to focus on if I'm putting money into any uh, altcoins at all. Uh, I really think DeFi is going to, you know, change things in the long run, and I think you know, massive gains are going to be able to come from DeFi. But again, while the market's still tanking and going down, yeah, I'll be very, very careful and mindful when getting into the altcoin space. All right, so crypto to massively transform four industries, according to. Uh, billionaire Tim Draper and look he's invested in some uh, really smart stuff uh, and made a lot of money you know PayPal uh, amongst a number of other things now he says uh, crypto will reshape finance insurance government and healthcare Bitcoin's impact on finance he explains will reduce corporate expenses on accounting uh, and legal help and it's good because it, it's a you know the blockchain it is like an accountant. It's doing all the work sort of for you. It's right there. Now, it's not to say that accountants won't ever be needed again. They're still needed. But the reliance on them will be a lot less. You know, it's, it's, it's all there in a the digital form and it shows you exactly what's happening with your money, where it's going, and it has a clear and concise uh, account for it. Draper believes insurance companies could rely completely on artificial intelligence and surveillance, which he says would reduce disagreements over insurance claims. So he said, imagine your house burns down, you know, and there's, you know, cameras in the sky and all the rest of it that can kind of see that and, you know, amongst other things, you could have a check being sent to you before you've even lodged your claim because it's already sort of uh, on the blockchain that a fire has happened uh, and, you know, the damage of it before they even get anyone to come out and sort of have a look at it and before you can even put the claim in. Now, I don't know if we'll get there quite that fast, but that is what he went on to say. Now, the billionaire also said he believes Bitcoin and smart contracts could offer similar benefits to governments around the world. And he also believes healthcare records could go on uh, the blockchain. That's already slowly starting uh, as we speak. And again, there's already been projects that come out and have tried to get on top of that, but they haven't taken off. Now that is the problem with these altcoins, is they all promise a whole lot, but hardly any of them are complete products and have done anything. You need to remember in the altcoin space, there's really only one project that's complete, and that's Bitcoin. It, it doesn't need to do anything else. It needs to work on scaling, but it is a complete project, so it's legit. Outside of that, everything else is you're still investing into a promise and nothing else so just be very very careful you know the gains are amazing in altcoins uh, but that's generally only when you're in a bull market once the bear market comes they get absolutely smashed and then you know a number of projects you won't hear from them until the next bull market they basically just go dormant and that's not really a project uh, that is likely to do too well. They should be continuing to develop, you know, more so obviously in bull markets, but even during the bear markets, that's when they really should be, you know, getting ready uh, for the next big run up and making sure that their projects are, you know, ready for the next influx because that's the way it's going to be. It's going to be constant boom and bust cycles throughout crypto until it becomes mainstream and then it won't have the such big booms and definitely not the such low busts. But we're still a little ways uh, from that. All right, some Chainlink news as well. So OVR is using Chainlink to connect the metaverse to real world data and events. 
So the current integration involves the use of Chainlink verifiable randomness function to fairly and transparently select a special grant fund winner from the list of participants taking part in the upcoming OVRL and treasure hunt. So what's OVR? So OVR is the decentralized platform uh, for G geo localized augment reality reality so ar virtual reality vr experiences with a vision to merge the physical and the virtual world through ar ovr allows users to build host and visualize ar and vr experiences that are customized to specific geo locations so again Chainlink, you know they're building their own you know sort of space and you know this is something that i really like and actually Thinking of it, this is probably something I'm going to continue to dollar cost average in. Chainlink has real world application, real use as constantly, you know, partners building on top of it. So there we go. Just a, you know, a bit of a, you know, a reminder of that what Chainlink is and that they are still very, very relevant. So that's probably something I'll continue to uh, dollar cost average into as well. But even that's kind of getting hit at the moment. You know, the two that are kind of holding the best again are Bitcoin and uh, Ethereum. Right, Elon Musk. So, was he forced into that decision about not accepting Bitcoin payments for Tesla? So, uh, Kevin O'Leary seems to think so. So, Tesla shareholders uh, likely pressured Elon Musk in the decision to cut down Bitcoin payments for Tesla. Uh, that's what Kevin O'Leary says. And it's because of this whole narrative about, you know, Bitcoin not being green uh, and bad for the environment. Again, you know, there's so much contradictory evidence out there, and it's always the case. Someone will tell you something's great, and someone will tell you something is truly horrible, and you've really got to make your own decision. I've seen a lot of stuff, uh, you know, blogs out there, and even people who I, you know, trust in the space uh, that have said, you know, 70 something percent of Bitcoin is mined using green energy because it's the cheap and because so much energy is required to mine it uh, and that's what I tend to believe as well I couldn't imagine there's too many people using coal power to mine Bitcoin considering how intensive it is and how much that energy costs most of them I would say would be leaning towards green energy uh, and I think you know once that kind of all gets sorted out I think that's when Bitcoin will start to make its next move uh, but it wouldn't surprise me if Elon was kind of pressured into it because uh, you know Elon is the CEO he doesn't own all of all of Tesla he has to answer to his shareholders as well. All right, moving on. So, U.S. Bank uh, State Street is ready to set up a digital a digital unit focused on cryptocurrencies. So, America's second oldest bank, State Street Corporation, will ex will again establish a digital unit to focus on cryptocurrency endeavors. This comes shortly after the banking organization, with over forty billion in assets under management, said it will enable crypto trading through its platform. Now again, this is there's so much of this news coming out. It's literally every week we hear something else about, you know, these big institutions setting up, you know, some kind of cryptocurrency trading platform or investing hundreds of millions of dollars into, you know, cryptocurrency uh, startups and setups and things like that. That's what makes me think we're still in a bull market. This isn't going to happen when things are getting ready to dump. It is just that moment where it got oversold. It's now gotten very quiet and very boring, and so no one's interested in it, except for the big guys. They're still pouring, you know, again, millions, if not hundreds of millions, sometimes even, you know, a billion dollars, i.e., you know, um, MicroStrategy could possibly buy another billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. They're only aiming for 500 million, but they had uh, $1.6 billion worth of interest in it. So it's these big companies that are still, you know, yeah, getting ready for the next big leg up is what I think is happening. But again, that's just my personal opinion. But again, you know, you're hearing stories like this and they have 40 billion in assets. Now, I don't think they're putting $40 billion worth into crypto. Absolutely not. But they may put 1% to that, which I think would come to about 400 million, something like that. Again, I might have my numbers off there, but I think that's what it would be. 1% of 40 billion would be about $400 million. All right. Elon Musk will have no role in the Bitcoin Mining Council. It's been a lot of upheaval about, you know, this Bitcoin Mining Council and, you know, whether that becomes too centralized and things like that. You know, I, I'm in two minds about it. I kind of agree. I don't want there to be a council that over, you know, 
overrules, overrides everything, you know what I mean, and sort of rules over it. That's not exactly what decentralization is about. But I, I wouldn't mind having a council that just, you know, provides, uh, what is it, you know, some advice. And that's all they do. They just provide some advice, you know, and uh, update, you know, people in the Bitcoin circle and all the rest of it, and just the general people as well. But I don't really want them having any kind of control over everything because that then goes against decentralization. But it sounds like they have come out and said, look, uh, they chatted with uh, Elon Musk, but he's not going to have uh, any specific role in it anyway. It's not to say that he won't talk to them and you know give his advice and things like that. But yeah, uh, he will have no official role. All right, again, another story that makes me think, you know, how could we really be in a bear market? So Arlington Capital launches a $100 million Algorand uh, ecosystem fund. So Michael's, uh, Michael Arlington's crypto venture capital firm, Arlington uh, Capital Management, is launching a $100 million fund on bets uh, uh, for uh, bets on projects building on the Algorand blockchain. So specifically kind of DeFi. Now they have invested uh, a lot of money previously into uh, cryptocurrencies. So Arrington Capital may be best known in the crypto sphere for its XRP fund, which it launched in late 2017 with almost $100 million in capital. And they've still got it, they haven't sold. It says here, we are extremely loyal to Ripple and to XRP and we believe in that ecosystem, Arrington said, but it's a multi-chain world. And I absolutely agree. I don't think uh, there's going to be well, I think there will be one kind of uh, clear winner. I, I do think it'll be Ethereum, but I think there's going to be plenty of space and everything's going to be interoperable and they'll all have their own, you know, ups and downs and, you know, the, the good things about their specific chain uh, and the bad things. Uh, but very, very interesting. Again, $100 million. Who's going to do that? And, you know, these guys are still considered smart money. Who's going to put $100 million into something if they think it's about to go bust? But look, in all fairness in saying that, they got into XRP in late 2017. So I'm not sure exactly what price they would have got into it at. Uh, it then obviously uh, had a really big pump up to, you know, I think it was $3 something. Uh, and it hasn't made it back to that. So, you know, that goes to show that even they can't pick the, you know, the best times to get in. But what it does say is that they haven't sold yet. So even if they're sort of at a loss, and I'm sure they got a really good deal when they invested in it, that's the way it works. They usually get a below market price. They're looking long term, they're not looking short term. All right, that's it for me. Bit of information out there. So again, I'm not too concerned about the markets at the moment. Unfortunately, altcoins are getting absolutely hammered. That's just the way it goes. But, you know, Bitcoin, which leads the way, it is still, there we go. I boost that up, it is still in this upwards channel. So as long as we're sort of in there, and again, even if we break out of it and just travel sideways, I'm not worried about that. It's bad for altcoins, but you know, it's really, we break below 27,000, that's gonna start to hurt. And really after 27,000, the next support level really is, sorry, getting down to about here, that old all time high. You know, a tiny little bit here around that 24,000, uh, whether that'll hold or not, uh, yeah, that really then takes us back down to here. All right, that's it for me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that gain train at the moment, but if you somehow uh, made gains, you've outperformed the market, congratulations to you, and I'll see you next time.